Typically to mate components, you'll be using the standard mates option. So if I go into the mate dialog, you'll see that by default this comes into standard mates and there's several mates here that we'll discuss. Now in the last video I talked about moving a component and rotating it as well as inserting components. If for example this was in a position that I didn't want it to be in and I want to mate this face to this face, typically I'm going to use the coincident relation. And the way mating works is you'll select out entities to mate, so edges, faces, vertices. You'll choose in order to add the mate in. And with standard mate, SolidWorks will try to choose which mate seems the most likely. Generally it's going to go to coincident. And so in this case I can choose this mate alignment option or sometimes to make this a little simpler I can use the rotate component to set the component up a little bit before I create the mate. So now if I come in and choose mate I can choose this face and this, and that'll line these up coincident. I can go ahead and click OK. Now you'll see I can move this around, but this face is locked to the plane that describes this face. And I notice that I have all of my components floating. I'm just going to go ahead and right click and fix this knuckle. So this is a little bit easier to work with. If I choose two cylindrical faces, it's going to default to concentric. And you'll notice I hit that undo button. If we hit that, it'll just place it back where you dragged it from. It doesn't matter what diameter of cylinder that you choose. It's going to make these concentric either way. It's not going to pay any attention to whether there's overlap between the components or whether they're coincident at that face. You'll notice also that when I rotate this, it simply goes right through that geometry. So keep that in mind when working with an assembly, that it's not going to tell you you have an interference unless you use one of the tools that does that, and it's not going to tell you you have overlap. Lastly, I have one degree of freedom left if I wanted to mate, let's say, these two faces. I could do that. In this case, coincident will fully define that. Parallel will also fully define this. So you see, once I try to drag this now, it says it's fully defined. And once I do create a few mates and exit out of the mate dialog, I get this mates folder, which is going to list all of your mates. You can also rename these to keep this a little bit easier to organize. I tend to not do that just because there's a lot of mates that generally get added in assembly. but that's one way you can keep track if you want as well. You can also add these to a folder. If I control click all three and say add a new folder, I can say knuckle front. And within the feature tree, 
of that knuckle front part now is a mates in standard mates. So this folder gets added once you create new mates. It's also in the knuckle mid. And so we can search through mates by each individual component. So the next part I'll mate is the sleeve. And I'm going to choose that cylindrical face and come around and choose this cylindrical face. And rather than concentric, I'm going to make this tangent and click OK. And I'll bring this back to the other side so you can see. And for the time being, I'm going to go ahead and make this face and this face coincident so it's a little bit easier to see what's going on. So you can now see that these two faces are tangent. And these components can both still be rotated. It's just going to look for any part of that face. If I go back into that tangent, I can use this mate alignment option to flip this. And now it'll be tangent on the inside face. And I can also go ahead and come in and say delete and delete out that coincident mate as well. Now I'll go ahead and select out the outside face and this outside face and choose the default of concentric. And then I'll choose that back face and this face. And the default, once again, is coincident. If I want to add a distance relation instead, I could space this off, let's say by an inch. Or maybe I have a little clearance, 0 0.05. And that'll allow me to add that distance. Just to exaggerate this a little bit, I'll make it 3. And you'll notice this flip dimension, it's a little bit different than mate alignment. So if I flip the dimension, it's going to change how this is dimensioned. So rather than being 3 inches out this way, it's going to flip and measure three inches out in the other direction and flip that around. Alternatively, the aligned or the mate alignment is going to flip the entire face. So you see the whole part rotating as it changes its alignment. But I'm going to go ahead and default back to that coincident and click OK. There are several ways to mate in a sphere. You can either mate it directly to another sphere. For example, I have two spherical cuts here. So I can mate those two together. Or you can select a cylinder and choose concentric. And that'll retain the spherical motion because the two have a concentric relation. but will allow this to be moved back and forth. So I'll go ahead and delete this out and mate this sphere to this sphere. And now you'll notice that that'll stay within the bounds of that sphere since it only has a center point. It doesn't have a center axis. Underneath the distance mate is an option for an angle mate. I can choose, for example, to have an angle between two planes or two axes. In this case, I'll choose this front face and the bearing sleeve face, and maybe choose an angle of 10 degrees. And click OK. 
And now when I rotate this around, it's locked at a 10 degree angle between the planes, but still allows that rotation. The last part I have to mate is this back plate. The one mate I haven't talked about yet is the lock in the standard mates. And this will simply allow you to choose a component and lock it in place. So if I choose these two, they'll be locked together in whatever relation they have right now. I tend to not use this mate at all, really, unless you're dragging something a little bit more conceptual and you just want it to stay in a certain place. But otherwise, I don't really use the lock mate. It tends to just be easier to use any of the other mates. So now if I were to click on this face and this face, that we'd probably want to be coincident. I can also choose the option of perpendicular. And that's going to put a perpendicular relation between the planes. I can also make it parallel so that this part can't be rotated. Or I could add a distance made in as well. Let's say this is a quarter inch away. Or maybe I have a gasket in between and we have a 50 thousandths gap. Next, I'll mate some of these holes concentric. So I'll mate those two concentric, and then these two concentric. The one thing that you're going to want to watch out for is that you can still add in more. Once in a while, you'll be able to add in more of these relations. I can probably make, let's see, I can make these two things parallel, even though I don't need that relation. And right now I just have an extra relation sitting in there that may come back to cause problems later. So keep in mind if a part's already fully defined, that you don't want to add any more mates unnecessarily. That'll just make the process of fixing an assembly with errors a lot harder when you get to that point. Other than that, that's how you use the standard mates.